I am unashamed. What about you? So, boys, let's face it. Y'all are seeing the same news programs I am. You're under quarantine. You tend to watch a little more what goes on TV. Jace doesn't quite see it as much as I do. Yeah. No. Yes, yes. But I, I, I've just I noticed see. we're living in a culture of overreaction to the smallest little thing. People now are getting fired. If they say something about some Confederate general, I'm like, do what? I mean, we're, we're holding each other to a standard none of us can live up to. And it's just, yeah, yeah, there was yeah. A, there was a uh, announcer for a NBA basketball team. He tweeted a tweet that said, all lives matter. That's all it said. Which makes sense to me. I mean, it's a true statement. Now, who wouldn't agree with that? Fired the next day. Fired the next day. That's my point. What? So, Fired so the next day. Over the so tweet. I'm just here. Because it was supposedly – the thought process was he's trying to hijack our message from the Black Lives Matter. But, I mean, that's how crazy it is. I mean, he got fired for saying a completely true statement. So I'm down here well, in the no, woods, that, that, and an I hear reaction. Yeah, I hear information like what you just said, and that's just one of many. So I'm sitting there thinking, you know, why don't we try to begin to exhibit, come to Jesus, and you will be given the Spirit of God and the fruit you will see, the result of coming to Jesus, you will see, because I've been in an in a era I lived without Jesus. Well, I saw what came out of me, and it was kind of like now, every, overreacting to everything. So I'm just suggesting, come to Jesus, and you will see love. Uh, I, I think it's better than what we have now. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and this is a doozy, yeah. self-control. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking <laughs> if you had those qualities, you would hesitate for whatever reason, you would hesitate before you burn the city down. <laughs> you would at least say, so these days when you mention qualities like love, joy, peace, peace love instead of hate, joy instead of despair, joy, peace, war instead of war, right of peace. So you just look at them and you think, to the human race, you would think, come on. <laughs> uh, and this, take the top two, and cap that with, uh, why don't we try loving God and loving each other? What it could be the downside to loving God, loving each other, and the qualities I just listed coming forth from all of us? You think it would really be so much better. But it's because I mean, people make mistakes, so they don't want to love them. Or... You know, people do you wrong. Right. But, you you know, it's interesting. You brought up that self-control. I think that is the most underrated Holy Spirit quality of all those. It is. You know, just think about all the, uh, you know, I don't, I'll see in the bulk of the emails that come in, right. and they're overwhelmingly positive about our mm -hmm. show, but we're not delusional, you know, to where we think everybody's going to be jumping up and down about things we say. And I'm sure there are times we say things that, we probably shouldn't have said. That's I'm right. glad I'm I'm glad I've glad yeah. i never researched a cell phone since I don't have one. I'm very thankful that I've never read what people say about me. I don't know what yeah. they're saying. <laughs> I'd rather be in the dark there oh, that's me. than listen to be yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, that's why I don't That's watch. why I don't have a cell phone. I said, I don't, I don't want to hear all that. What? Well, I have it, but I use it for you know navigation or phone calls. But uh, and you use my phone to make calls, so technically you're using one. You're just saying, Jace, <laughs> call them and tell them to bring the trailer. That I you know? do. Well, I know. I'm saying somebody needs one. But I was gonna make the point. We get way more stuff over what I call trivial stuff that we talk about. You know, we've made some gambling references, and 
you know, whether it, it's okay to drink, not get drunk. Well, these people get so, what I call the uh, the church police, they get so upset <laughs> about these issues. And uh, when you brought up that self-control, that, that, that's, what, that's what made me think about that. You know, you have opportunities to, to show self-control in a lot of these situations. I, I'll give you a for instance, which I'm kind of chasing a rabbit here, but I'll give you a for instance. Now, here's me. I've never been drunk. I do not struggle with drunkenness because I've never been drunk in my life. I don't know, even know what it would feel like. You know, I've never Trust drank. Me, you don't. You don't want it. Well, I don't want. I'm. <laughs> I'm so far gone now. Good. And you said, "Well, how do you? How You'll do be you... on your hands and knees, uh, barfing." Yeah, yeah that's. Well, I don't the... like to throw up, so yeah, I'm well, out on that already. Well, you're a wise man, Jay. That's yeah. Right. So to do that, you know, I, I, even though I'm, I feel free in Christ. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. First yep. Corinthians. I read that and thought, yes. You know, and I'm under grace. And, you know, Paul told somebody, you know, okay, drink a little wine. Jesus changed the water to wine. So I'm like, I'm free to do that, but I'm going to have to exercise self-control. So I put on myself guidelines to keep myself sober. Yep. Now, I didn't read this in a book. My first one By was. By the way, you choose to be that way. That's right, no doubt. No now doubt. watch, and I feel led now, now by the, guy the spirit. Wrote, he, also, he, one of the guys who questioned us, I don't, I can't remember his name, but he said, "Well, why would God design a hell?" And knowing people are going there, he seems like an unkind God because he's made a hell for for the the sinful. And then the murderers and his, the his question was it was Robert and he said why would why would you even be born if you're going to you know someone that he left out born. one simple thing and Jace to your point then you finish your story yeah we have all of us a choice well right a, to live a life of love joy peace but you decide that and you try your best to follow that through and when you make a mistake because we're under grace. He forgives us. We say, my bad. I was a little impatient there. I know I'm supposed to be paid. So so it's all covered. Yeah. That's why blessed is the man or woman who sin the Lord and never count against you. Right. Well, that's what grace is all about. Now continue to story. Well, what I was going to say You've is. You've chosen not to get but, drunk. But Jake. here's my point, and I'm, I may do this because I guess I get a burr in my saddle when I read this stuff. But now. I base it on situations. Now, now take the drinking thing. If I go to something where there's kids around, I, I'm not drinking a drop. I, I'm just not doing that because I do. Because a lot of people, the the emails will be like this, like for gambling, they'll say, "There's a lot of people that's lost everything they had, you know." And there's they, but well, that's a self control issue. By the you, way, they, Jace. they say, "Look," but their point is, you can't touch it. You can't do it. But, you know, when you start thinking practically about it, let's say you spend $100 to enter a bass tournament. Well, is that gambling? Well, now we can have a whole debate on whether that's gambling or not. But my point is there's, there's a difference in paying $100 where you got to get lucky and catch the biggest bass. Let's face it. You know, you may catch a hundred bad, but you don't catch the big one. You ain't going to win. You're gambling that you're, you know, with your, and they're that's like, well, I, that's not really gambling. That's why gambling is never mentioned in the Bible. For There's sinning. a big difference in that than, and somebody taking every dollar he has and pouring it into a video poker machine. Well, or, wait a minute. Like the, <coughs> well, what was the problem? It wasn't the circumstance. It was the lack of self-control. Well, it was a, <laughs> I, had I'm a, saying? I had a couple I was counseling one time and they were having financial problems. And so between the time I saw him and the next time they came in, a young couple at church, he had the big idea that since they were so far down on their bills, he took their entire paycheck and went over to the boat mm -hmm. in Vicksburg because he thought, in his mind, he thought, this is the only way I can catch us up. Huh. Well, guess what happened? You know, the, the boat took that as well. So mm -hmm. then he's got to come back and face the wife who's already like we have problems. So I just never forget that couple and that mindset and his mindset that that made sense to him that this was going to catch him up. But, of course, it didn't. And So, well, right. so we well, might as get... well, while you're on your point, to prove your point, so we might as well uh, come to an agreement that not only 
will the will the wicked uh, persecute us? Many times, the godly is what Jesus is saying. The godly, the legalistic godly, will also chastise us. So, well, yeah, I figured out. Fair. I figured out that you know what, you're not going to get out of here alive by holding it against people. I just say, hey, I don't, I don't. I don't hold it against them, Al. No, and we don't. Whether well, it's coming from I, the right, the left, or in between, I'm like, you know what? And, and well, look, we got a large audience. A lot of people have been taught a lot of different things. And so, I mean, we're laying out here our biblical study of where we are. Mm -hmm. We realize people have different views, and we're okay with that. So we're not saying, well, you know, you, and I'm not don't saying. Don't criticize you're gonna, or don't send you're gonna, you're, you're going to change their heart. I mean, they'll just make a blanket statement like like that. Like, look what that leads to. So we're not going to do it. But in my opinion, which that's is good. Not, that, that's which not is a bad. I, I get it. That's what you're coming up with. But then if you put, so I'm no longer watching the show, or you know, I'm offended, or it, you know, it's like, well, wait a minute here. You've come up with a narrative that's working for you, but you got to realize the bigger picture is what you said is a self control problem. Yeah. It's like, look, if I go to a place and I'm in a in an event or whatever, and everybody's getting drunk, I ain't gonna drink a drop. And you say, well, why don't you do that? Because I'm showing people that it's okay to exercise self-control because it's a powerful weapon. Mm -hmm. Now, is it wrong for me you know, to take a sip? No. But I'm choosing not to do that Here's in that life because Here, I, I want to show a fruit of the Spirit in this particular situation. Here's a good little text. First Timothy 5, the Apostle Paul writing on behalf of the Holy Spirit of God. Stop drinking only water and use a little wine. He did say a little because of your stomach and your frequent illnesses. Evidently, according to the Spirit of God, speaking through the Apostle Paul, a little wine from time to time is a good thing and has medicinal uh, well, think about it like this. I, I think it's a good point. I don't know what to, what to say except give me a break. Look, think about this. Let, let's take gasoline. Now, is gasoline dangerous? Yeah, it's dangerous. Yeah, it's dangerous. If not handled properly. Do you remember the day that me and you were lighting fires up the creek here? We were making a duck hole. So we were cutting small trees, which the funny part was this wasn't even on our land. That was back in the day where you just – you roam freely. <laughs> we made a duck hole on somebody else's land. But uh, that's kind of funny when I think about it. So Phil <laughs> had, wouldn't allow had, that now. had been burning. It is redneck country. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Phil, has been, he had been burning these piles. And so I was with him the next day because we were going to what we you know call clean up the piles. Well, we had a gas can beside us. The fires are... How far away were those fires? Well, they were smoldering fires. I don't Normally, want to embellish. I used diesel. Are you sure it was gas? Oh, you don't remember this? Okay. <laughs> no, I look. think he's forgotten. So, look, the gas is pretty close to us. The fires, I would say, are 30 yards away. And we're just standing there. And, and the next thing we know, kaboom, the fumes from that gas had, the fire seemingly was nowhere near and that thing. You don't remember that? It it blew us straight back. That's happened and, numerous times. It's like my. It's, it's like so many times. He it's like my two buddies that I went to high school with. They came to Monday morning classes at at my high school, and both of them. I said, "What in the world happened to y'all?" Because all the hair on their head was singed <laughs> off. Their faces were puffed. They're red. And I, he said, "Well." We were stealing some gas out of a truck, and when I told my brother to give me a light where I could see where to put the hose, he meant flashlight. Well, he said, give me a light. He took a cigarette lighter out and, and snapped that, and that thing went uh, kaboom. Boom. And they both came and looked like they had been in a... Well, and you remember the... Hang, hang on, Joe. Let's take a break. Now, part of this coronavirus happening is people are having to cut their own hair and they're like oh you know what am i gonna do but when you think about it that's a good problem to have <laughs> a lot of people they don't have to worry about cutting their hair because it's all falling out <laughs> they just they just, go the they go the uh the cue ball you know they're just there peel are, it off 
perspective things about problems, you know. Oh, I can't go to the barber. Well, at least you have hair. <laughs> so you've come up with a you've come up with an interesting point. Why do people cut their hair? Because when I say I gotta I gotta have my hair cut so that what what's the reasoning behind cutting hair anyway? Is it a, like a like a model you need to fit into or is that's it a, a statement? Well, that's a you got into what's the, your statement? I, I, I've got to get this. You haircut. went into the philosophy of hair. That's even bigger. Well, to to Jay says, I don't know the answer to that question, but I know that guys that can't grow it uh, would like to want be able it. to grow it. They want it. That's exactly right. Okay. So we got a company. Uh, Why is that? I don't know. That's the you're asking the thirty thousand foot question. Well, I'm down to just trying to get my hair. They want hair because they want. There's probably three or four. I have have no authority in this issue but i'm just saying uh they think <laughs> and no it, expertise they'll think oh, it, this is not the final word on it no this is an opinion uh they want a date and they think having hair helps that process yeah, really they it's, oh yeah it's they, they true. think women want to date guys with I hair i would think the relationship you would like to have would run a little deeper than the length of your hair <laughs> not, i'm just saying. i told you i'm it's not a pretty the shallow world, it's, it's, it's a pretty shallow world it doesn't matter it's what people Look, think somehow it's the the length of my hair is 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 about me and, and my taking care That's of you fine. loving you i don't know about the length of your hair would be an issue this it was, is an issue this should be called philosophy it's okay i'm bowing yeah. out of the discussion also it helps it's good go with you go with your deal it's good right. camouflage look and it keeps you from getting sunburn there you go uh you know we need it so yeah. so no our, doubt about it our sponsor okay. uh good point jay that's our, my, that's our sponsor my is called Thank keeps you. and uh basically they offer two fda approved hair loss products so you can go to their website. You get an online consultation. Make sure you can take this and uh, and give it a shot. Keeps dot com slash door. If you go from watching on our podcast, you get half off your first order. Keeps dot com slash door. You remember the guy we brought to the Lord? And admittedly, he had some problems, and uh, and Phil was going through his. You know, routine. What what what's your problem? You know, and uh, he said, "I'm a I sniff gas," yep. and Phil was like, "On purpose," <laughs> and evidently he was getting some hot. But he said, "Jet fuel's the best," mm-hmm. and I was like, "What?" I, I mean, that, that that's what. Good for you. Well, look, this guy who was young, who we did bring to the Lord, but it was always a struggle. And look, he, he died. He died from that. He mm. died later. And uh, I don't and think that. Now, bad. here's why I'm it's bringing sad, this up. Sad, you say, sad. you say, why am I bringing up Gap? Because to the to the police, to the rule keeper, I've given you some examples right here that shows you that gas is dangerous. Now, here's their mindset. They're like, yeah, but it don't say anything in the Bible about it. So we can use it in our cars, <laughs> you know. But I, I'm telling you, it's dangerous, and I gave you some examples. And my point is that you can you can make bad decisions with a lot of different things out there. It's going to come back to those qualities of the of the spirit and being wise in circumstances. You you just God didn't design the church to come up with all these arguments on why you can't do something or why you should based on the circumstances around it. that That's what I see in the churches that just burns my bacon. What a lot you know? of people do, especially <laughs> yeah. young people, they sit there and once you go through the rule regiment, the rules, the rules never stop. Jace, you come up with a pretty good line being raised as a Robertson down here. <laughs> and when someone asks Jace, you know, how do y'all you know, keep from getting drunk and all that? Jace said, well... We have one rule. There are no rules. Yeah, it's a we just grace. have to use good judgment. Well, based on, well, and based, it, based on grace. Based on it, grace. A, but you you laid it out, Jace, because it's the Bible is written in different contexts. I mean, the the truth is the truth. But you'll have Paul saying what you quoted him a minute ago, saying you need to drink some wine for your stomach today. And then you go to Romans 14, he says, look, if you're in a situation where someone is weak in the faith and you need to be strong and help that, that is brother. correct. So in, in that context, it was talking about meat, not alcohol. You wouldn't you say it's the same. same. You know, it's fine, and you drink in front of him. He's tempted. And he's he an alcoholic. Gets drunk. Right. So you wouldn't want to do that because that context, well, like, you laid it up. I got another email, you know, about because we the other day you said, uh, 
you know, the stock market, uh, let's face it, Jay says gambling, and I kind of agree with you. Yeah. And, uh, but I got this long letter, you know, it was like, not that it tell, was sinful, idiot, but you are, but betting. It, it was You're like, betting tell your right dad thing. that the stock market is not gambling, and here's why. And he laid out this long thing, you know, he's like about your, you're investing in companies. And yeah, look, generally, I, 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 I agree with him, except, you know, I know the stock market. Look, it's it not the company. It's what you think about the company. It was kind of a misstatement here that I read. And I'm like, he don't understand. No, you're gambling on what you think is going to happen to the company. Because, look, just because you own it and just because they have great numbers, that don't mean the stock's going to go up. That's right. Because everybody else has got us. What makes it goes up? And they might be fud- buy. fudging on their numbers, too. Here you go. And so, look, it's the same <laughs> principle. We're going to get back to self-control. Now, look, if you take all your money and all your family's money and you start buying penny stocks or day trading, well, guess what's going to happen? You're going to lose it. You're going to lose all your money. <laughs> so... <laughs> All right, is it's the same stupid? thing about thinking you can beat Vegas. Uh, is right? it sinful? I'd say, yeah. <laughs> you, you, you're you're messing up because you're not providing for your family. You're misusing what God gave you. That's right. But what happened was you lost control of fruit. That's why when you read that, I thought we never talk about that. Not the, very much. The fruit of uh, fruit of the spirit. That's why is I hesitated before I said it, and I said, "Lower." I was thinking, "This is a doozy here." There's a lot self control. There's a lot of categories where you have an opportunity to use self control. That that may blur the lines on because p- what people want to do, and that's why I was referring to the church beliefs, is that they take the Bible like a college course. Tell me what I do, and tell me what I don't do. And therefore, now I know if I pass the test, God will put me in. Let me give you a good example. You missed one thing, the grace of Jesus. You missed it. Let me give you a good example. The other day, the local redneck who works for me in that I give him a retainer, I pay him every month. He gets a check. Whether I call on him or not, I've got him there. To where he knows he's got a check when I do call and say, get the track hoe, and I want that track hoe down here next Friday at 7 o'clock. I said, got it? He said, I, I got it. So it's like the president has the red phone. Your red phone is the red phone. The red well, I'm glad well, you're that, bringing this up because yeah, I have an issue <laughs> uh, with the local redneck who works for you. Uh-huh. But go ahead. Finish your story. So and then- <laughs> the local redneck, this redneck, I bought a truck. He drives it. He drives the truck that I own. Most trucking companies, if the person who buys the truck, they hire the driver, and they get the money for what he hauled, and, and they then pay they the pay, him, pay him. But in this case, I said, you get it all. It's my truck, but you drive it. But the stipulation is you have to get off food stamps, welfare, and all that. You're taking my money anyway. I'd rather you take it being productive than sitting around and making taking money from the government. So I'm going to alleviate the welfare roles by one man, you. I said. <laughs> so you're letting him use your truck to make a living. There, and he's thinking about it. He's thinking about it. And he said, man. He, he has to work for you when called upon. I'm just right. explaining. The, right. I, you, I know using the, the arra- same truck. I know the arrangement. <laughs> if I'm I just... want a load of gravel, I say, Red. Get me a load of rack gravel. He said, how big you want the rocks? And I tell him what size rocks I want. I said, get it down here. Uh, get it down there by tomorrow. And I said, I told her, I'll tell you where to want to put it. So he says, done. And he does it. Well, he came by the other day, and he said, uh, I got a good deal for you. And I said, I said, speak freely. He said, <laughs> Speak I can get you. I, I can get you. <laughs> Don't hold back. I can get you two bulldozers, one big about the size of one you already have, and a little smaller one. Two bulldozers. There's a backhoe, and he said that's in with the stuff. And he said there's a twenty foot trailer with walls and a roof on it. One of them enclosed trailers. Hmm. They've got a. They've got a. a, a, a now, see, Table I, saw. I, I would have interrupted and said, what, is I'm this stolen to, merchandise? That's why it calls for patience. You're hearing something from the local redneck. And he said, got a welding machine. It's there. Also a tractor. 
these are, I said, how old is this equipment? Uh, what vintage is it? What year? He said, most of it's 80s. It's older equipment. Eight, he said, well, that's you can get old. all of this for $8,000. <laughs> So I said, I'm out. I know. I said, so here's what you do. I said, you go back over there. You bring me pictures of all this equipment. Yeah. I want to see pictures. Phil, this I said, is a Why? bad deal. This is not going to end well. I hope but you it, didn't do it. But it does end well. Oh, oh boy. Here we go. So I'm boy. listening, and I said, go over there. I want pictures of the equipment. And I said, I want to look at it. Well, and if I the said, That's police one. pull up here in the next 30 minutes, I'm out of <laughs> yeah, here. Yeah. I'll tell you that. They won't yeah. hear it for a few I days. I said, number two, after you take the pictures, Mr. Redneck, I said, I want you to get on each vehicle, get your truck up there if you need to jump them off. I said, see if they'll crank. He said, what? I said, see if they will run. But he's a mechanic. That's why I told him. I said, see what they're, see if you can get them cranked. Well, he comes back with the pictures. I said, did you start them all up? He said, yes. I said, did they move when you put them in gear and you took off in the bulldozer and then the backhoe? Did all of this move? The tractor? Did you go around the circle? He said, I drove every one of them. He said, I had and to jump not, Did you ever ask him, are they stolen? I'm getting to all that. Okay. All right. I said, who is the person you're, you're getting this from? Because I need to know, get that information. How did this equipment come to be all stacked over? I've been there for a couple of years. So that's why I said, crank them. I want to know if they'd run or they're just pieces of junk. Yeah. He said, they all run. They're smooth. Now, he's a mechanic, so he knows, you know, if you've got blue smoke poured out of them, something bad wrong. He said, a little leak on some of the seals, you I know, mean, Phil, and all that. That just seems like a so, really cheap price. So, well, so he goes over. He does all that. When he comes back on the after he went over there and did what I told him, he said, 15. Okay. I oh, said, so. I said, who's the person who has them? It's a widow. Her husband died two years ago. Right. He was a diesel mechanic, so he knew how to work on vehicles and all that. Okay. And I said, i tell you what, Red. So he told you eight just to get you interested. I said, i tell you what. And then <laughs> I said, moved it up to 15. I said, can, can we it. resell some of this stuff? You think if we had to sell it, oh boy. if I just take it and sell now it? Now we're doing that in San You think we can sell it? He said, oh, no doubt about it. So well, the deal I, ended with this. So currently, right now, I have the small dozer, mm. the backhoe, the trailer, the tractor, the, the, the Lincoln welder. So – I've got that on my. But premises. you were never a part. The of big that. dozer. We <laughs> ran it in the in the paper. The big dozer. It hadn't been but two weeks ago. The big dozer. The, some guy came along and said, "I gave you three thousand for that big dozer," and I and Red said, "What about it?" And I said, "Tell him forty five hundred." Bah. So he says forty five hundred. The forty five hundred came to me. So the fifteen now is down to nine thousand five hundred. Okay, I have one question, Phil. So here's the deal: I got I got spare if you need one. I got a spare dozer, a spare backhoe. If you need to haul anything, got to trade. You say, could you sell all this stuff and make about ten grand? I could, but I've decided to keep most of it because I've always got another backhoe just, in case yeah. this one tears up. You don't want up. to get in the junk vehicle business. Hey, I've, hey. I've never been in the junk business. I'm just telling well, you, you what sort I of did. are. Huh? I think just, we're there. I am now. <laughs> So, so hang on, let's take a break. So, Jace, did you ever get your Tommy John uh, I underwear? Not. What I have not. What I have to yet? What I've concluded is the coronavirus has spawned, you know, a run on underwear. <laughs> so, which makes sense because you have toilet paper, underwear, or meat, lack thereof, toilet paper. I could see where well, right. it I would guess, be an issue. I don't know. I don't know. I just report the facts. <laughs> but they did send some, but they, you know, it's hard to, we all kind of look the same. And so I think they, they gave the size measurements because when I looked at what I got, <laughs> I was thinking, oh, wow. Yeah, it's too big. Too big. Yeah, so Huge. I would simply so say. So I said they must have thought I was Willie. <laughs> And Actually, and I sent him over to Willie's house for he and his. So uh, Willie large now son. has. You can do your business in the woods <laughs> using the leaves, no matter the underwear. That's that's. Okay, but this is they sell underwear. Yeah, they don't, and they Al. According to Al, he, oh. it's like a life changing. Basically, moment. this I is a, a comfort. A comfort. Look, uh, and there's there. So this summer, especially, they've got a, a this. Uh, it's called Cool Cotton, and. 
I mean, it's just because, you know, let's face it. You get out in the woods, you get on the golf course, you do a lot of sweating. I'm a, oh, cotton, I'm a cotton man when it comes to materials, clothing. Cotton is my number one one thing. Well, this it's thing 100 they got. degrees here every day in the shade. Yeah. So here's the, here's the way Tommy John puts it. If you want to add some chill to your cheeks – Okay. As summer comes along, try Tommy John Cool Cotton. So I'm telling you, this it's life changing for you. So you want to upgrade your underwear? They, they cost more than just the old tidy whities but trust me, you, the money spent is worth it. Just my opinion, uh, from my experience with them. So they're very confident in their underwear. If you don't love your first pair, you, they have what they call it a best pair you'll ever wear, or it's free. You can. Send, send okay. it back, keep it. They'll send oh, you your money back. We're which is really good. playing this up. Oh, right? it's good. Okay. Tommy John. TommyJohn.com slash Phil. You get 20% off when you go and you order anything. That's anything. So TommyJohn.com slash Phil. And I, I will try to work on getting a report from Willie. <laughs> good luck with He's that. wearing them. Well, well, we, we, we sent, sent them over. I don't know. They were too over. big for us, but they're going to send us some a little smaller that will fit us. So. Here's my but if your question is, was it a gamble? No, no. Hold on. That's not my more pertinent question. <laughs> I was wondering my, where this was going. My this question is, gambling. my question is, what's to keep him from telling you fifteen taking the seven? Let's say it was the eight. Because I baptized him into the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. He trusted. I converted okay. him when he was seventeen years old, and now he's about your age. So, you say, has he ever crossed you, and you have caught him stealing anything from you? I said, not one time. You say he's a brother. Okay. I'm helping I'm my saying, brother out. It does seem weird that it went from eight to fifteen, and so I was. I was thinking, well, what what if he said— I took that into consideration. He said it's 15 instead of 8. And I said, but, Red, I tell you— I mean, that's a pretty That kind of equipment, jump. I said, if I wanted to make money at it by just buying it and selling it, I said, I can make a few dollars out of it. No all right, well, let me, it. let me tell you— So, so I decided to keep most of it, so and it all so does it was, run, like so you said. So gamble. Okay. All right, well, here's my So question. you were gambling Red, that— Red, you, I'm trying—I mean, uh, da, uh, uh, Jace, <laughs> I'm trying to get you to see, son— <laughs> But you have to have faith sometimes, even in okay. a redneck. All right. Well, I'm glad you brought this up. And you gambled on the equipment. We were supposed to be in listen. John today, but now this has turned into real life here. Well, let me tell you. because This he, is kingdom living, Jason. Well, well, kingdom he, he living. He works for you, right? Love your neighbor. He happened to be a redneck. Right. Well, I had a situation. He's occur. a brother. Now, I baptize all of them. He's family members. But you say, how many stuck? This one here is the only one All right. Stuck. Well, let me get to my He's point. He's my family, too. So yesterday... All right, I need a trailer. Now, I don't know if you've heard about this, but Uh-oh. it'll be the first time I'm ready to roll I up my sleeves. I got the report from Dan, Dan the unit. Well, let me Jason, tell you, I keep up with it. Let me tell you the truth. Here's what happened. <laughs> he gets information, Dan. So I call. I know your Argo was going out. You needed okay. somebody to that. I, Who'd you call, though, when you wanted something done? Yep. I called Jay, and I said, Jay, call Dan and tell him to go get my trailer. Now, that may seem a shock to you because probably through the years you've forgotten. I bought a very nice trailer, I would say, seven, eight years ago. And I said, Phil, use it whenever you need it. Treat it like it's yours. I've come and gotten it maybe twice in seven years and used it. But so here's what happened. Well, Phil... It, it's my trailer. Right. I, I paid the money for it. Right. Phil acquired it. But he had the same deal going with the local redneck. which So now my trailer is being used by the local redneck, which I'm fine with. Right. Here was the problem. When I called Jay, Jay called your man, Uh-oh, you Dan. Your trailer. Dan calls Jay back and says, uh, Jimmy, or maybe we shouldn't call his name. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Red, Red. The, the local Jimmy Red. redneck has... Uh, all of Phil's trailers, and they're all being used. That's the word I got. He's working hard. I said, you tell Dan to call me right now. (laughs) So Dan called. We got a situation in redneck land. One of those trailers, the (laughs) nicest looking one, that's mine. I said, I don't mind the local redneck using it under the agreement that Phil has. However, I use it from time to time, and when I want it, 
part of the agreement, because I'm going to tell you the Jace agreement. When I want my trailer, <laughs> guess what? I have it immediately. Dan found the trailer. I, w- I will admit. Well, let me when finish I drive the story. By, when I drive by the Redneck's house up there. I feel like I'm a mediator. If somebody says, if somebody says there's a lot of equipment out there in that Redneck's yard, how well, did he do that? It's kind I of remind like, them, hmm. I said 90% of that equipment is mine. I said, He's just borrowing it, and he's yeah. forgotten to bring it back. But I know where it is. Oh, All right. Boy. So look. So, so look in my yard but, for my equipment. If it's not there, I go over to the lair with the barn we take off from to hunt. If it's not there, guess what? I go to Red. So let me interject one thought here, Jason. I always okay. find it. Because so I want to finish this story. Okay, I want to interject one thought. For our audience that may not – was trying to picture what, what, what the local Redneck's empire looks like – Go to YouTube and type in Sanford and Son. Sanford and Son. It's <laughs> an old show from way back when, a couple of That's guys out in L.A. When you see that, this is what we're talking about. All right, go so, ahead. Jason. So Dan calls me back about 30 minutes later. He said, I found your trailer. I was like, of mm-hmm. course. He said, there's a problem. He, It's loaded down. I said, Dan, <laughs> I don't think you're understanding. I only use this trailer once every three or four years. So all these I, problems are not your problem. Yeah. That's what I said, I'm going to pay you. I understand it. I said, I'm going to pay you $100 to do this. You take everything that's on that trailer off of it right now. And you hook it up. Yeah, I said, I'm going to give you 100 because I know. Because he said, it's a lot of stuff. He said, well, where do you want me to put it? I was like, it's not my problem. <laughs> take the stuff off the trailer. <laughs> Put that trailer on your rig and bring it up here. Did you get the trailer and get the Argo to two the Two hours later, he pulled up in my yard. I handed him $100. I said, good job. He said, I don't think he's going to be real happy about Life that. Life is good. I said, I don't. Look, I, I, I went Tommy to Tommy. That proven my point. I was lying. Trust the rednecks, the baptized ones. Don't trust when he said, He said, I don't think he's going to be happy about that. And I went Tommy Lee Jones. I said, I don't care. I thank God every day. Day for the rednecks. So here's what's oh funny. Goodness. So he got my Argo because I have a brand new Argo. No one else. That, <laughs> hey, Al, you know what? Hey, no one else has ever reached out to most of them because we've got this thing going about, okay, a bunch Phil, of Phil, I'm not why knocking you, why your why agreement. Am? I was just reminding you that I have a trailer up there. And look, so when I drove down today, I passed by. Did you and see I where looked. the stuff was on the ground? Where? Oh, yeah. It hadn't moved. <laughs> But here's what's funny about Again, it. Again, you, you know, that, you know where it is, And Jay. I see my trailer there because yeah. he's brought it back. Yeah. You know, that was weird to me. I thought, he just brought it back, but he didn't load the stuff back. Oh, no, no. But then I looked over across the, the road with his same stuff. There's two other trailers over there. That's what I'm I trying thought, to tell you. The man's got three trailers, and he tried to say, nope. what, what, oh, what, no, what, I'm using it. Hey, those other trailers? Well, they're yours. They're my trailers. Well, I know. But <laughs> we I'm got saying. a lot of trailers yet. More trailers than we can use, and you're belly aching. That's why, Jace, no. fruit no. of the Spirit, love, oh, joy, peace, yeah. Jace, patience, kindness, goodness. Welcome to Redneck Mediation. Well, let's, I- hang on. Let's take another break. Oh, I needed this. I need to get that off my chest. Yeah, you've been it. I've been it. I was hot for five minutes. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll admit. Oh, I'm way. I never said, well, get hot, Jason. He said, I didn't realize that. You know, because then Dan felt bad. He said, I didn't realize it was your trailer. And I was like, well, now that you understand that. Jason, let me ask you a question. Yeah. <laughs> When's the last time you saw me through a fit of rage? Oh, it's been a while. It's been I, a while. Years. I'm just saying. Yeah. We grow, we 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 hear something, we we say, okay, you grow from it, you learn from it, mm-hmm. and you move on. Right. I mean, you're not gonna I don't expect everybody to be we're all sinners. Well, <clears throat> and like you're so I reach out to the, the, the local rednecks and such and um our congregation, I say this with pride, we're half African American, half mm-hmm. white, and I told them, I said this is where it should be. I said, we're eating together. We got a big meal there. The homeless come in. Mm-hmm. They don't care what color they are. They come <clears> in. <throat> we all have a meal. We remember Jesus. I point them to Jesus. We've got the SWAT guys, the police. They've been converted. I converted them. And they're there. And one of them uh, kind of uh, tongue-in-cheek said, said, Robinson, I don't want to 
hurt your feelings. He said, but I've arrested a good portion of your congregation before. <laughs> I said, so what do you think now? And the, and the police officer said, y- y'all are doing great with right. these people. He said, I just, you got to remember, unless we operate like that in our society, we will end up with what we now have, this argument of the day. We're just human beings well, sitting no, on the, sitting on the side of the great, road. There's no black churches, white churches. We're all together here. It's a great point about, you talked about reaction. I thought about it. So this summer on our family vacation, we had a we had an episode. One of our one of our family members, teenager, um, all of a sudden there's smoke coming out of their bedroom, and someone next door calls the fire department. We got the fire department showing up at our big house. I was there, and Jace was there. It's you talking about reactions, and so so our 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 young uh, family member comes and says he was just sitting there on the phone, and all of a sudden his bag, his suitcase. You know, spontaneously combusted and just yeah. caught on fire. That was the story. That was the initial story. He had some fireworks in there that he probably should have had. And no, he shouldn't have. And, and he, he fireworks <laughs> inside a suitcase. There he found go. some fireworks at Duck Commander, because right. they, I think, they used to sell them. Or yeah, we used to. Now he's them. one of our family uh, members. How did he get to be our family member? Adopted? Well, we adopted him. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I got you. Well, we were trying to protect the innocent here, <laughs> Phil. Right. But, we're uh, trying to stay a little <laughs> bit vague. Feels a like, hey, what happened? <laughs> Which one was it? Yeah. He yeah. Got hadn't heard this story. I didn't hear about the fireworks in the suitcase to right now. So what happened was, since we're going here. For some reason, everybody takes on a role here. You know, we. You this know, is the point Je- I wanted to make. Right? Jessica got the fire out. Because uh, it's panic. Right? It's pandemonium in she the house. She turned into a yeah. bulldog. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which out I, of my way. You know, which and, uh, I like this. She took oh, she's fantastic. How old is this young man? He's young. <laughs> He's a teenager. And okay. so okay. I, though, thought, you know what? I need to find out what happened here. Now, everybody was being encouraging, let's get to fire, is everybody okay? So you and, use it as a teaching moment. That's well, right. I just thought, here I am. And look, we had to deal with the fire department. They show up, you know, so we're having, look, and this may help families that are listening That's to why this. I wanted to bring you, it up. You have somebody, I thought, what do I need to do here? Because it, it was a very traumatic thing. I mean, kids are crying. It was scary. I mean, when I'm talking about, it wasn't just a little flame. There's smoke. When I walked in over there, you could not see your hand in front of your yeah, face. Fireworks uh, in a suitcase have that have that mark. Well, you know? once they catch on fire. Oh, yeah. When 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 she opened the door, I mean, the, his room is in flames. Well, the kid had an experiment and, of some type going on. Well, there. yeah. They, that's where we're getting. And uh, so I, I said, how did this happen? And, it, you know, he was quick because, look, I was a kid. I've had kids. I understand. Your first line of defense it's is to lie. To lie. Yep. This goes back to Adam and Eve in the right. garden. Yep. You know, who told you there were fireworks in the bag? You know, that was my, you know, who told you you were naked moment. <laughs> and uh, he said, well, uh, I heard the fuse go off. I thought, now, first he said, it just exploded. Spontaneous. He said, combustion. I yeah. heard a fuse. No, no, let me back up. He said it spontaneously combusted. And I said, well, how'd your hand get burned? Because I looked at his hand. You know, I had some ice on his hand, I, and I, there was powder burns. I did a little mini investigation. <laughs> oh, Jay took on the roll as I said, <clears throat> well, how'd, you, how'd your hand get burned? Well, then I saw his mind racing, which I knew he was lying because I'm like, why is your mind racing? What are you thinking? He <laughs> you, said, you were watching the process. He said, well, I heard the fuse ignite. I said, what were you doing when you heard the fuse ignite? He said, I was on the phone. I said, so let me get this right. You're on the phone, and all of a sudden you hear what you know is a fuse going off in your bag? <laughs> I said, I've been around you your whole life. You're not paying that close attention. <laughs> You're not here. You're, hey, hang on. There's a few. There's a bomb going off in my bag. I know the sound, and I, I didn't was, have anything to do yeah. with writing it. I said, now "You're." You're expecting me to believe that? I said, "Just go ahead and come clean." He's like, "No, that's what happened." So, and then I put my hand down to try to put out the fire. I said, "Well, there's a difference in having your hands burned, but you have powder burned." You, you, the explosion got your hands because I'm looking at it. 
I said, police, they do tests to see if you have powder burns. I said, I don't need one. I can see. You got powder burns on You're both hands. You're going like CSI on it. So I said, let's go to your room. And he said, well, why? I said, well, if this spontaneously combusted, of course, the firemen have already been there, and he gave them some fireworks. But he gave them the ones that didn't go off. Right. So he had more. And uh, I said, let's go to your room. I said, because if this combustion happened, what we we got forty something people in here. What if it happens again? And yeah, we, we all, don't want it going off. And all we night. all die. And he's like, oh, "Okay, that's 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 a good point." And I said, "So on the way over there, I said, do you realize in the history of mankind that a firework or any kind of fire, for that matter, has never just <laughs> occurred? This is the first without a cause." <laughs> and he said, "I didn't realize that." I said, "Yeah, what you're saying happened." has never happened in the history of mankind or the world. I said, you know when you wake up and see the sun? I said, you know what the sun is? He went, a burning star? I said, yeah. I said, who started it? He said, I didn't know there was a starter. I was like, oh, yeah, there has to be a cause. I said, that's why we believe in God. We believe he struck the match. He's like, oh, okay. So I start hang, going. Hang on, just let's take one last break. So I start going through his room, and I, he said, what are you looking for? I said, I'm looking for what started that fire, because we've already established that fires don't don't happen at random. It's never happened. He's like, yeah, I didn't realize that. I said, do you have anything in this room that may cause or start a fire? And he's like, nope. I said, what is that thing right there? And he said, that's a laser. I said, I think lasers can start fires. He said, not this one. Ooh. I said, really? Uh oh. I said, well, let me have that. <laughs> Not this one. I said, is there any, any? I said, are you sure? Because I thought I had the smoking gun, the laser. <laughs> so I'll go over and Google this model, won't start a fire. So I thought, huh. So I'll go back over because Missy said, well, I saw him have, uh, he had a laser one day and that wasn't it. I said, uh, oh, okay, there's another laser. <laughs> <laughs> and Jace is on the case. Jace so was pretty good police work. <laughs> yeah, so I walked back over, and I said, uh, I need that other laser. And he said, I didn't say I had one. Ooh. I said, I know Missy did because she saw it. He said, oh, yeah. Uh, he said, I know. That need- laser. <laughs> <laughs> I open up. Because I already asked him, is there anything in here that will start a fire? I pull out this laser. Look. This thing looked like some kind of futuristic. Well, it looked like a lightsaber uh, to me. Lightsaber like, gun from and look, Star Wars. How does a 15 year old kid get this thing? Well, he internet, ordered it internet. without anyone's knowledge, created a fake email account so there yeah. was no paper trail. Oh, this, this was a naughty, naughty move. And it had a magnifying glass on it. Well, look, I got the model. I just Googled it right there looking at him. I said, Will this start a fire? And he's like, I'm not sure. I said, well, you were sure that that first one would, <laughs> but you're not sure about this one. I said, you know what I think that means? Oh, it'll start a fire. I said, I'm thinking I see how this happened. So when I Googled it, the page that came up, it said, perfect for lighting fireworks. Oh, boy. I was like, look at now this. Now it's all coming together. We got a winner here, boys. I said, so let me get this right. You're in the bed. Your bag is beside you. You had this magnetic i mean magnifying rock and you could take a laser and just go to that fuse and then and then you went oh i said the reason you heard it go off (laughs) is because you made it go (laughs) off (laughs) and you thought oh this thing does work (laughs) help me my hands are burning so so here's so here was the ladies and gentlemen you're hearing a story (laughs) about child rearing and the redneck world but here's the here's the part of the story i want to tell the audience because it was a reaction that night it's it's pandemonium jace is on the case he gets to the bottom of it the next day Jace is already heading home, so he goes home with him. So I thought about that. I said, "Man, they're gonna have he's gonna have six hours with Jace on the ride back. There's gonna be some." Well, that was kind of plant. Willie called and said, "I'm on. I'm gonna come get him." And I said, "Willie, I, I'll just bring him. You know, I don't. Why? Why drive seven? I, you know, I'm ready to go anyway. I'm quarantined so, at the beach. You know, that's right. He was and ready. I said, and it'll be a perfect situation for us to get to know each other better. <laughs> Getting to know you. So anyway, they come back." 
Here's what I love about it. So we get a, <clears throat> a text uh, from our nephew the next day and said, I want to call everybody and tell the truth about last night. You know, so after his ride home with Jace on his own, because I don't know that anybody told him any different, he said, I want to call all my cousins and, you yeah. know, my aunts and uncles, and I want to tell the truth about what happened. And he did. And so I, I just thought it was such a great thing because <clears throat> we reacted in a way that we had to parent him because his parents weren't there. So the we're results kinda, could have been far worse. Far worse. We were fortunate that we didn't yeah. have a bad thing that went on. Look, I, I'm like Jace. I was a team. You remember Jace when, when, uh, my lifestyle was ratting me out, but I was such a good liar. So yeah. Jay saw a bunch of beer bottles in the in the back of my car, and he thought, oh, I got him now. So he goes and tells mom, I think, yeah. that, you know, you want to see what he's up to, go down there and look at that. So she opens up that trunk, and there's a number three wash tub or an ice chest full of beer bottles. And so mom's like, she brings me over there. She said, what is this? And I said, well, we were cleaning up uh, the beach the other day and we decided to do a good work. And They so were we, all the same brand. And they <laughs> so you have new. been in this young man's so what, what I'm saying is I can relate to just lying, you know, just, you know, to avoid trouble. And so we all recognize that what I thought was, was a different ending that maybe happens with a lot of families is we could have all been mad, panicked, our vacation is ruined and all that. But instead... And there was some of that in the first. Oh, it was thirty minutes. It was tough. You know I, mean, I mean, the, when the, I, look, when the fire was, department showing up at your and house, I don't like being lied to. And I <laughs> yeah. was looking at him like, "Repent or perish." <laughs> yeah. I, I'm just being honest. You know what I mean? I, I I was hot. He took the hard line. Or as I would say, I recommended to Joel Osteen one time. <laughs> Oh, see, just come on out with it. Turn or burn. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> well, we had that moment, but I loved it because, and so, you know, what, what was, what I loved about it is the reaction. Like once they left, you know, some of the cousins are making up Rowdy started the fire, you know, the old Billy Joel song. And I was like, ah, yeah, don't start all that. You know, don't, don't go well, in and tell that. So, but, so what we said was, I heard it by saying, you know what? It's okay. We forgive you. Which he needed to hear that. He needed to hear that I messed up. I'm telling the truth. And our family still loves you. I mean, I was like, hey, I can't wait that to get back. That was the overall theme was that you messed up. But look, but these things, before he wasn't telling the truth, they were still saying that. But on the way home, you know, and it took it took probably five of the first six hours mm -hmm. to get to a point to where we're like, look, you, coming clean is part of the process. Using this as a deterrent for other people, and you know, showing God's grace. This this is how we operate. That's we don't we thing, don't keep uh, secrets. Yeah, you it's know? a good thing for our audience to hear stories like this because it tells you we're, we're giving you a glimpse of actually the age old dealing with sin and loving each other, the fruit of the spirit. That's where we. That's started. what launched well, this conversation. That's right. Up. So yeah. to, to wrap it up, because we're out of time, is uh, just what you said, Dad, that if if the fruit of the Spirit is our guiding influence, that's Galatians 5.22, by the way. Read that passage. And when stuff happens, even bad stuff, figure out how you're going to react as a believer. And you don't yeah. want to overreact, which that's is what right. we're seeing to a lot of stuff today. So I think it's a, it's a great lesson hey, for all of us. I'm glad it turned out well for y'all. That's why you don't go on vacation with us. Hey. That's why I don't do beaches with family members. It might catch on fire. No, I'm just thinking, let's no. say a lot of water, you can't drink any of it. There's no shade. Sand is getting in every horse of your body. Half-naked women running around. That's just this side of hell. And now... That's what a beach is. And now suitcases can spontaneous combust. now you got combust. suitcases up in your room blowing so up. So they were half-naked in 1970. Whatever. Oh, no. They're about three-quarters. Oh, oh it's now. worse than half. So I've heard. Stay away from beaches. Have fun at the beach. <laughs> So we're so glad you guys were with us today. You can subscribe on iTunes or Spotify or YouTube or Facebook. And be sure and rate us on iTunes so that other people can know about the podcast.